Hello everyone. I chose to read Blaise Pascal's Ponces or Pensies, depending on which pronunciation you want to go with. And I'm going to go with the English one, so we're going to stick with Pensies. So here we go. Quoting Pascal, and I am going to read my book critique. Men despise religion. They hate it and are afraid it may be true. The cure for this is first to show that religion is not contrary to reason, but worthy of reverence and respect. Next, make it attractive, make good men wish it were true, and then show that it is worthy of reverence because it really understands human nature. Attractive, because it promises true good. Penzies is a compilation of the philosophical musings of Blaise Pascal. Fragments of his ideas and arguments pieced together for what Pascal, before his untimely death, had planned to weave together and present as a defense of Christianity, an apology for the Christian faith. Dr. A.J. Krailsheimer, translator for the particular edition that I, I chose to read, explains that, as he puts it, Pascal worked usually on large sheets of paper, writing down his thoughts in evident haste, with many alterations, erasures, transpositions, sometimes setting down the words so that they looked more like poetry than prose. Each entry was separated from the next by a line drawn between them. In the spring of 1658, Pascal created a table of contents which included 28 headings, one of which was not used, for the projected apology, and presented it along with its purview and goals to friends and members of Port Royal. The project met with their approval and full endorsement. The work would be unified, but layered and textured with multiple sections and two parts. First part, misery of man without God. Second part, happiness of man with God. Or, first part, that nature is corrupt, proved by nature itself. Second part, that there is a Redeemer, proved by Scripture. Pascal did not live to see his project completed. Published in 1670, eight years after his death, one source says of Pascal's work, he discusses with great wonder and beauty the human condition, the incarnation, God, the meaning of life, revelation, and the paradoxes of Christianity. Krailsheimer includes four sections in his translation of the Penzies, papers classified by Pascal, papers not classified by Pascal, miracles, and fragments not found in the first, what would be published, copy. One of the fragments not found in the first copy was the memorial, Pascal's own recording of when, quote, he saw the light that guided him for the rest of his life, end quote. Copied onto a piece of parchment and found sewn into his clothing after his death, the memorial of his conversion, it would seem, was with him at all times. And one of those lines in his memorial says simply this, certainty, certainty, heartfelt joy, peace. French philosopher, theologian, Christian apologist, religious thinker, scientist, inventor, mathematician, physicist, God took seemingly competing perspectives on life, blended and harmonized them, and placed them within one man, Blaise Pascal. Bertrand Russell, in his well-known A History of Western Philosophy, said that Pascal, and I quote, sacrificed his magnificent intellect to his God, unquote. Well, to that I say, yep, it, indeed he did. And the results of that sacrifice are extraordinary. His experimental and theoretical work on hydraulics, atmospheric pressure, and the existence and nature of the vacuum, his invention of the first calculating machine, his creation of the first bus service in Paris, along with the further distinction of being an early pioneer in existentialism, made significant contributions to the world of science, math, and the culture of his day. However, it was, as he put it, his night of fire, his conversion, that ultimately brought about Penzies. 
though written in fragments, Pascal's end purpose for his writings was an apology for the Christian faith to point out man's need for God and his grace. Krelsheimer points out, what is more, only in Christ can the paradox wretchedness-greatness be resolved. It is not only impossible, but useless to know God without Christ. Thus deism, the religion of the philosophers, is for Pascal almost as far from Christianity as actual atheism. In sayings attributed to Pascal, he is noted as stating of his fellow philosopher, I cannot forgive Descartes. In his whole philosophy, he would like to do without God. But he could not help allowing him a flick of the fingers to set the world in motion. After that, he had no more use for God. One of Pascal's philosophical arguments was his own theory of the three orders. Just as lines, squares, and cubes, x, x squared, x cubed, cannot be added together as being of different orders, so in the realm of human knowledge, that which is proper to the body, the senses, to the mind, the reason, and to the heart are of different orders and must be carefully distinguished if error is to be avoided. That is why those to whom God has given religious faith by moving their hearts are very fortunate and feel quite legitimately convinced. But to those who do not have it, we can only give such faith through reasoning until God gives it by moving their heart, without which faith is only human and useless for salvation. Pascal's epistemology was that knowledge was not merely through reason. He states that if we submit everything to reason, our religion will be left with nothing mysterious or supernatural. If we offend the principles of reason, our religion will be absurd and ridiculous. There is one area that Krelsheimer suggests that Pascal has his most obvious weakness of argument, and it is his use of rabbinical interpretation. His quite uncritical reading of the prophetic books, especially Daniel, led him into open absurdity, but in the last analysis, these errors, gross as they are, should increase our respect for him. Krelsheimer continues, if Christianity is more than a moral code or a pious legend, it must be related to historical fact and tradition. And if Christians are to follow Christ in respecting the Old Testament, it is more meritorious to examine the credentials of the Jewish books, even getting them wrong, than to ignore the problem. For this day, for his day, and for an amateur, Pascal did very well. And to that, I say, Dismissal of fault in the midst of criticism? These are the words of a true admirer. For me personally, Blaise Pascal's Pensies was a pleasant surprise. It read more as a devotional than a philosophical piece. After researching Blaise Pascal and reading his Pensies, I welcome Grotas's statement, which says, Pascal's influence reaches further than many philosophers. Grutas wrote his doctoral dissertation on Pascal and quotes him often. I can understand why. Philosophers continue to argue the questions such as, what is the meaning to life? Who am I? Could I be living in a matrix? What is right and wrong? What happens after death? Are human beings just machines? Does God exist? Destiny? Free will? It may be that Pascal offers the greatest argument in answer to all of these philosophical questions. Pascal's wager says this, if I believe God exists and it turns out that he does, then I have gained heaven at the small sacrifice of foregoing the pleasures of sin for a season. If I believe and it turns out that God does not exist, then I gain nothing and have suffered the finite loss of the pleasures of sin I have foregone. On the other hand, if I do not believe and it turns out that God does in fact exist, then I have gained the pleasures of sin for a season at the expense of losing eternal life. If I do not believe and it turns out that there is no God, then I have the finite gain of the pleasures afforded by my libertine lifestyle. And to that I say, if one accepts the wager and one per pursues the things of God, one may find the wager leading them to the truth of God. For as Pascal puts it, the heart has its reasons 
of which we said, most nothing. Thank you all so much. God bless the last two weeks of class and bless your summer. Thank you.